Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness. We have a special guest, Ms. Lucinda Cook, RN. Lucinda went to Louisiana Technical College in Tallulah, and she got her LPN there at the age of 36. She was working as a correctional officer, and she noticed that people in the nursing profession were working shorter hours and making more money. At 32, she went back to nursing school, became an LPN at 36, went back to get her RN at the Southern University at the age of 42, and she got it at about 45, and today she's working as a travel nurse. She has three children, and she's going to share her relationship turmoil, how she's gone from man to man, how her husband or her father baby's father abused her, how her mother was, was denigratory to her, and even how she was sexually abused as a young teenager. This story will shape your purpose and help you pursue your dreams. You don't want to miss this time with Lucinda Cook. Watch it. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness. Thank you for joining us. What a delight to have you on our show. We have a special guest on the show, Ms. Lucinda Cook. Ms. Lucinda is a registered nurse who's been through the um, travels nurse circuit. She's worked as a LPN at Primary Health Service Center. She's worked as a registered nurse in different facilities, and she's worked through her way up to the top of her nursing career. Started at 32 but pursued her dream and in spite of three children and you know taking care of her family and providing she has done what God wanted her to do become a registered nurse she cares for people she works hard um, she raised her children as a single mother and today they're both graduates and one son who's in high school so I want to talk today about how you manage your love life your family life and this is the, the biggest question I have for you Miss Lucinda you saw your mom's treatment of your dad, and you saw how she shut him out of your life. Did you do that to your own children's fathers too, or you, you chose to go a different route? I ch actually chose to go a different route, Dr. Mm -hmm. Toby. Um, I did. I chose to go a different route because I saw how it affected me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want my kids to have that same, to be exposed the same way. I, so I, I chose a different route. I actually allowed, even when we separated, I actually allowed them to be a part of the kids' life because I, I want the kids to succeed. Mm -hmm. I, and I feel like with both of us in their lives, they had a better chance. So they had access to their, to their father? They did. Okay. They did. Till today, your daughter knows and sees her father? Yes. Okay. Yes. For example, when she graduated, High school, he came. Yes. When she had her baby, I guess she had her baby, right? She did. Okay. Mm -hmm. My oldest and, one. And mm -hmm. when she maybe graduated, did she finish college? Too? She did. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. She did. What did she study? Business or? Um, she's was a healthcare, my uh, oldest yeah. healthcare administrator. That's awesome. Yes. And your daughter is, the younger daughter is a Cancer. psychology mm -hmm. major. That's fantastic. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we need to develop this tolerance right mm -hmm. because it's not marriage is not just between a man and a woman it involves the children mm -hmm. so if you if you don't get along at least don't let the don't spoil the, the <laughs> don't, don't don't mess up the waters mm -hmm. in between let the children at least mm -hmm. know their parents don't give them a biased view mm -hmm. of their other parent mm -hmm. let them make that decision for themselves mm -hmm. you know you um, know i want to say this um, my oldest daughter, daughter, dad, he, he did his part. Um, okay. his family did great. Um, my second daughter, father, he have, he could have done more, mm. but one thing I learned is to not, as a mom, I don't worry about what he doesn't do. Mm. I, I still step up to play and do what I have to do. And I learned not to downgrade him in front of my daughter because at the end of the day, that still is her dad. Right. So no matter what I felt about him, right. I never said it out loud to right. her. 
they make scenes. And the third, the father um, of your son? Yes, I, I give him the opportunity too, um, but some people don't want the opportunity. You know, okay. some people choose not to, okay. and, and that's fine. You know, that that is fine. I, I give him the opportunity, okay. but he chooses not to. I guess he he's waiting for the right opportunity. Maybe he's not able to. You know, sometimes he may be in a situation where he's not able to. I think that. Um, sometimes as father, they get caught up as, as, as money, as their mm. provider, not being right. able to provide. But as a mother who is the sole provider, I don't care about the money. I care about your time. Emotion. Give, yes. Right. Get, that's, that's your son. Mm -hmm. Give him some of your time. And I think he'll appreciate that much more than money anyway. So you tell me that you had this three baby fathers, mm -hmm. but you never really thought you found love until you ha you were 40. That's a little bit complex. Okay. How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> okay, so I know some of you probably like, yes, yeah, like Dr. Toby. My first child, um, like I said, I had when I was 17. So I never had anyone to talk to me about relationships or talk to me about the birds and the bees. Um, so pretty much, um, the first time we had sex, I got pregnant. Right. Yeah, so there was his mom, um, they're believing God in Christ and doing what's right by God. Eyes. So we were kind of forced to be together because of the baby. And we dated and tried to be co-parents for five years. And so that was it with that one. And so that was a failed relationship. The second relationship, um, with my second kid's father, um, pretty much the same thing. I had took a break from men and talked to him and believed whatever he said, and that was it with that one. Now the third one, um, I actually did felt that I loved him. I cared for him deeply, but he was just so... It was just me. He was a mean man. Like you said, nobody <laughs> wants to be with somebody who tears them down. We want to be with somebody who brings us up. Right, right. And I never forget, like, at that time, basically, you know, they use this term equally yoked. And maybe right. we wasn't equally yoked. And I wanted to be, like, I would pray for him more than he would pray for himself. You know, I would pray for him to change. But a lady brought to my attention, like, baby, you can continue to pray all day long, but until he wants to make that change in him, right. It's still in him, mm -hmm. and that's the way it was between us. So I cared for him deeply. I wanted to see him change. Mm -hmm. I wanted to love him, but he was just so physically and mentally abusive to me. Wow. That's, that's what it was. And I, I prayed to God that once I got out of that relationship, he removed me or he removed him, <laughs> that I would never look back, <laughs> and I didn't. So that's what happened with that one. So was it, were they all from New Orleans, or these are people you met? They were. They, they were, were all from, from New Orleans. Oh, okay. They were all from New Orleans. Wow. So you yes. kept it very mm -hmm. local. Mm -hmm. So after the age of 40, tell us how, what happened with your love life. I mean, you said, I'm not interested. I'm going to just focus on my mm -hmm. kids. So are you in a relationship at the moment? What have you seen in the last couple of years of just love and life in general? Um... At this time, I'm not in a relationship. Okay. I'm really, I am dating, but I'm just taking my time to really get to know people. Um, after, like I said, when I dated that guy at the age of 40, and he actually just couldn't tolerate, I had to re-examine myself. I had to re-examine Lucinda. I had to see what is it that Lucinda want. I had to learn Lucinda's worth. And queens and kings and and that's pretty much where I, I am at now so now I I have to sit down I have to conversate with you I have to see what your goals are what your plans are in life what are you doing I I actually I'm taking time to get to know people so prepare yourself for the person yes. God wants you to have because yes. there's somebody out there you yes. know and um it's not only in New Wilton you can find them. No. You can find them in Peoria, <laughs> Chicago, yes. Illinois, Hawaii, yes. New York. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people don't look outside there in the in mm -hmm. immediate environment. So maybe maybe people should look outside a little bit more. Yes. Are you a supporter of online relationships? Are you a supporter of 
I don't know what they call it now, mingle or no. dot com, <laughs> marriage.com, mingle.com. No, I have not tried online okay, dating. You've never tried it? I've okay. never. Okay. Never. Dr. Toby, I'd be crazy me <laughs> now, so I know <laughs> what online is going to lead to. No, oh, sir, Lord. I have not tried it. Interesting. Wow. So tell us a bit about, um, if you, tell us how you raised your children. That's the focus of our talk today. Mm -hmm. You, you, you saw what your mom did. You decided, I want to be a mother, not mm -hmm. just a provider. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very mm -hmm. powerful statement yes. because it's okay to be a provider, but it's even better to be a mother. Mm -hmm. So what did you do deliberately to, to get out of that, maybe that sphere that your mom had created, who was just a great provider mm -hmm. but wasn't a, a mother that you could come and talk with about what you wanted to talk about? I, I open up the lines of communications. Um, I make it where my kids can talk to me personally about anything. For a fact, we, we sit down at the dinner table and some of the questions that I ask them, they'll be like, they look at me like, I can't believe as a mom, you asked me that. I need to know what's going on with you. You know, let's open up the lines, let's talk. Um, another thing, every day we talk, any day they leave the house, I let them know that they are loved. I, I give them a hug, kiss, I'm more emotional. I hug them, I kiss them, I tell them every day, I love you. It, it's no secret, it's no wondering, like, do she love me? Yes, she does, she tell me every day. Um, and you don't shame them if they I make don't. a mistake, like, don't pass a course, or they no. maybe don't look, you know, some parents will tell your kids you're fat or this or that, you know what I mean. There was another thing, um, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. As a child, um, I, like I said, I don't know really what transpired with my mom and dad, what made her feel certain types of way about him, but she took it out on me. Oh, wow. So every day until I turned pretty much 18, I was called ugly. You wow. know, yeah, she, she pretty much was like, you ugly, you know, you're ugly or, you know. And so those things, ugly doesn't come out of my mouth. You know, wow. we, we're dealing with my kids. No, I don't say ugly, dumb, stupid. I always uplift them because I want them to have high self-esteem. I want them to know that they can do anything they set their minds to do. And I'm, I'm their supporter. I'm like the, the biggest cheerleader for them. Mm -hmm. So what lessons would you like to share with our viewers on raising three kids? You said being open, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Practical steps. I mean, you said trying to be there for mm -hmm. their graduations, maybe sports mm -hmm. games. So any other relationship tips raising children in our generation? There's so much out there, drugs, fights, gangs, uh, you know, prostitution. In, in, when I was working in primary, I was shocked. A 15-year-old patient kept coming every year, every, every month with STDs. Mm -hmm. So one day I locked her in my office and I said, hey, I want you to talk to me. And then she told me that she was prostituting, mm -hmm. there was a pimp, mm -hmm. and that her parents did not know, mm -hmm. and that she was buying clothes. And I, you know, when I got the parents in the room, I said, your, your daughter is 15, and she's mm -hmm. buying new clothes, new shoes, new perfume, and nobody's asking nobody is. how she's getting the money. Mm -hmm. So it was a child protective case in mm -hmm. that case. But, so what would you say in our, this is happening in, in Monroe, it it's happening everywhere. It is. So how would you tell your parents, your, your viewers, how to avoid this um, debacle of kids going into drugs, maybe, God forbid, kids getting involved in gangs and mm -hmm. murdering or stealing and then prostitution and selling their bodies. And so how do we avoid this in our younger generation? We want to pray for them, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Any practical tips you're going to offer? Um, I, I basically just talk to them, Dr. Toby. I let mm. them know their worth. You know, I let my girls know okay. their worth. Yeah, you're beautiful, wow. you know, but it's more to you than just the outside appearance. Right. Don't let, don't be fooled by men. Right. Don't be fooled by and persuade, let them persuade you to doing things that's outside your worth. Mm. Um, even with my son, you know, I tell him, you know, about him getting in trouble and being exposed to drugs. You know, I just, I talk to them. I, I open up those lines of communication. And, and while they're in school, I don't let them worry. You know, if they come to me, Mom, I need these tennis shoes. Okay, I may not can get them for you this week, 
But if you do what you're supposed to do as my child, I'm going to get them for you. You don't have to go out to men and sell yourself to men for these tennis shoes. No, we're not doing it. So you, you inspire them. I inspire them. Motivate them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You have a unique relationship with one of your baby father's mother, Miss Bailey. Mm -hmm. We do. And that is awesome. I mean, many people take their in-laws as their outlaws, their enemies, but you have drawn closer to your, you know, baby father's mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was a, that's a very, very positive mm -hmm. step. So that I want you to talk a little bit about how you can develop godly relationships even with your in-laws you know you in-laws don't have to be your enemies am i no, correct they are in-laws can become a source of strength um it's it's so ironic that you say that because miss bailey is not the only one miss bailey is the one you know who put me in the church even when me and her son separated and then my second child um linda harvey me and her son we we don't really speak but me and linda harvey are the best of friends um and i just love her and like you said they're not they're not your enemies they're there really to help you oh, um she supported me through school every time i called her miss harvey i'd be like oh i don't think i could do this and boop. she give me my pep talk she believe in me and she motivate me she tell me you can do it the nurse is not easy if it was easy everybody would be a nurse you can do this i trust wow. in you i believe in you i have faith in you so she always was that motivator to me mm -hmm. and like you said sometimes you have to change your surroundings you have wow. to change the people that you're surrounded, surrounded with by. yeah and and that's what i did i i basically listened to those ladies those older ladies and i i gained the knowledge wow. i listened to them mm -hmm. and I, I got it so that's why the Bible says if you walk with the wise, you'll be mm -hmm. wise. But yes. if you walk with the fools, mm -hmm. you'll be destroyed. Exactly. A lot that's of true. young girls have been molested, abused, if not emotionally, mm -hmm. sexually, physically. And it, at times that can become a reason for future problems mm -hmm. down the line. Mm -hmm. Now, you just said it. I don't know if you noticed it, but you said what your mom said ugly every day. Mm -hmm. Say calling you other that is emotional mm -hmm. abuse. Mm -hmm. um, it was. was there ever any other? And I'm not trying to bring up old memories, but this is for the sake of our younger generation, so that we can learn from that. Did you experience physical or sexual abuse, and did it make a difference in your relationship in the future? Because what happens is a lot of girls get sexually abused, mm -hmm. and then they become like sluts they begin to think that they don't value themselves anymore mm -hmm. this man abused me sexually and therefore i'm not good enough for anybody you mm -hmm. know so i think it's a big issue the statistics say 25 percent of women in america have been raped molested sexually at one time or the other mm -hmm. but nobody talks about mm -hmm. it you know so what do you think about that is that a real issue did you ever have to deal with people making those attempts at you or were you ever a victim of physical or sexual abuse i actually dr toby was a victim of it um mm -hmm. at the age of 13. Wow. um what happened was i not to take anything away from my mom right. she was a great provider it was just you could have been a little better well um it, it just think like you said as a child you're being physically abused um Cause she don't talk she believe in whooping you know straight we're not talking we everything is whooping and then you you're dealing with emotional abuse by you being calling ugly every day and so my mom had a good friend and she took a liking to me and i actually went to, to live with her well she had a son and i think her son was probably like 17 and i'm 13. i love this woman because she was a good mom she had that line of communication open for us well her son molested me oh, wow. um i i regret that i never said anything to her because i know she wouldn't have condoned it oh, wow. but i didn't say anything because of fear of going back to my mom and wow. and that's that's exactly what it was i i allowed it because i feared of going back to that environment because now i'm in an environment where this lady is really treating me as her daughter and she's showing me you know the the perfect mom image right. and so i did allow it to happen and so yes i i do regret that i never said anything 
but did it affect how you treat how you treated men or how men treat because when you get molested like that and i know it's it's painful it's hurtful at times you begin to not have a positive mm -hmm. reflection of yourself yes and men you know you don't even have a good relationship with men you mm -hmm. look at it as a sexual act not as mm -hmm. a loving mm -hmm. relationship so mm -hmm. did it affect you mentally or emotionally or psychologically i mean that is a deep hurt never yes. to tell anybody you've kept it in there for 30 years or mm -hmm. more yeah you know um it does affect you and your relationship because it it you you can't distinguish like in my mind i don't know about nobody else's but in my mind it was like this is what i had to do like this is um like my duty this is this is just what a man want me for. This is what I'm just here for. I'm not here for anything else. I'm I'm just here for this. This is my duty in a relationship, and this is it, and this is it, and this is only. So and you, that's all so a man can possibly want me for. So you now told your daughters how to watch out for that. Obviously, I did. obviously that made you doubly yes. precautious. Yes. Um, my daughter called me um approximately three months ago, and I would never let him stay with anyone someone their friends were allowed to stay with me but they were never allowed to stay with anyone and she, my daughter called me about three months ago my oldest daughter and she called me she said thank you she said i th just thought you was a mean mom and i said why she said no i thought you was an overprotective mom mm -hmm. and she and i said why she said i had i was on the phone with my friend today and she was telling me about her uncles molesting her mm -hmm. and i talked to another friend and she was like her cousin molested her she said and i couldn't relate to that because i'd never been molested Wow. And that was my whole goal was to protect them protect from them, ever right. being molested. Wow. Yeah. And did he happen to do it again? Or was I mean, this is just terrible. Was it a one-time thing or was it a recurrent thing? Um, it happened twice, okay. but so happened my sister came in. She's oh. actually spent the night and he started doing it to her. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So if you were to suggest to the police, to the authorities, how can we as a community reduce sexual molestation in our women? You know, 25% is a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of them go to jail for life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that solves the problem. Some people blame the women. Oh, why were you alone with mm -hmm. him? But that's, that's so illogical, you know. A woman has a right to do her, live her life mm -hmm. and not be monitored because a man is a rapist. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you were to suggest to the police, to the authorities, how would you, would you recommend maybe training women to defend themselves or would you recommend, you know, giving women the opportunity to report with confidentiality? Because a mm -hmm. lot of times women just are ashamed mm -hmm. to report, right? Yes. Um, like you said, there is shame to report but I, I see a lot of time Dr. Toby we I don't know it's the world has it where we have to have a man and we don't actually get to sit down and know this person that we bring into our home so that's why now I don't, I don't do that I don't bring no one around my kids because I don't I don't know you like that and I see a lot of time, and I, I feel so sorry for the poor babies that's going through that now. Um, because me, women believe that this guy is who he portray he is, and he's really not. And so obviously you baby. now train your son to treat women with respect. I do. I because do. that's one of the things that will I come do. out of this. I do. You tell your son a woman is not a sexual mm -hmm. tool to mm -hmm. be conquered, but she's not just a body. She's mm -hmm. a soul with a spirit who has emotions mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, so it's yeah. important that young boys, I think maybe we should try, try to train the young boys mm -hmm. to understand that the fact that you have testosterone doesn't mean you should mm -hmm. do what you want. I mean, exactly. you've got to control those, mm -hmm. those uh, sexual urges, I don't. you know. I don't. Wow. So, you, so you've, you've had that conversation with your, your son. I know he's 16, 15. Okay. He's it's, learning about the birds and the bees, and it's it's embarrassing to him. But I think that my son sees what I go through with his dad, and and he wants to be a better 
better father, a better husband. He sees that, and that is what makes him not want to be that person. I also, I instill in my son, God, you know, Christianity. I instill, I make him watch videos when COVID was here and we couldn't go to church. I was saying I would watch videos, and I sent it to him, hey, watch this video. After this video, I'm going to give you a quiz to make sure you watch this video. Oh. Because if my son believes in God, he's going to know how to treat a woman mm -hmm. because God has pretty much told him how he's supposed to treat women. And so he's going to know that. He's going to know you, you treat her as she's mm -hmm. your queen. But you, you, you've told him before that you love him over and over. I do. How do you tell him about his dad? You tell him, I love your dad, but... We're not, how do you phrase it that he understands with his, you know, he's a teenager? Um, I, I pretty much, I don't sugarcoat anything oh, okay. from him. I, okay. I pretty much told him how it was between me and his dad. And we didn't work. We, okay. it, maybe it wasn't our time. It wasn't, you know, we wasn't for each other. Um, so I don't sugarcoat anything right. for him. I was like, he was young, you know, and I, right. I put it off on that. He's young. He maybe didn't know no better. He didn't know God like right. he's supposed to know. And I, I take it, his dad made me stronger, and everything is for a reason. Right. Um, his dad may not knew how to love a woman. His, his mom died at the age of nine, right. and he was placed in foster homes, you know, so he didn't feel love. Mm. So he, how can he love me Give when something, something yeah, he doesn't have he right. doesn't have right. yeah wow. so you've been an excellent mom and excellent daughter loved your mom till she died you mm -hmm. were willing to move her in with you some people will be like i don't want to hang out with her <laughs> and all that so no. it shows that god touched no, your heart, god touched my heart because other people will be yes. vengeful but mm -hmm. you were no. looking to give mm -hmm. back what um, you felt she had mm -hmm. contributed and and that's how God wants it to be. The Bible says, honor your parents. Mm -hmm. That is the first commandment with a blessing. No. So no matter, unfortunately, no matter what your father did to you, the Bible still says honor them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say obey them, mm -hmm. but at least honor them. Show them respect. Mm -hmm. So we've been sharing with Miss Lucinda Cook. We're going to come back one last session. She's going to talk about her faith journey and her life in the church and the local community. And um, she's been sharing her heart with us. You don't want to miss it. Join us on Holy Ghost Night, August 26th. We're at the Oyo Hotel on I-165, 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. We have it every last Friday of the month. Powerful time in God's presence. A time for healing, a time for deliverance, a time for testimonies. We believe God for open heavens over your life. We're so delighted that the city of Monroe, the city of West Monroe, is experiencing a revival and a transformation. And we're looking forward to you joining us. Don't forget, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. See you next time.